Now that we can identify what a straight line, a dotted line, and a dashed line mean in a die line, we can begin to start looking at die lines and we should know what those lines represent. So we're looking at a standard two panel, one pocket, pocket folder. So it has two panels, so we're going to take, let's say, an 11 by 17 and fold it in half to create the pocket folder. And there's a pocket that extends on the back panel. It also has a glue tab because this glue tab will fold in and up to create the pocket. The outside lines are straight lines because we will have a straight cut to create that form. And the inside lines are dashed lines representing a scoring fold. Now that you can represent what this die line means, you can pretty much make any die line you want. Now in our slideshow, I've included the information from the Art 1200 InDesign software course on creating a die line. I'm not going to read through it with you. You can read through it at your leisure. Um, I'll scan through them and pick out some important things along the way, but I just want you to have it in case you need it down the line. So in case you don't have me as your InDesign teacher, or maybe you get to package design and you can't figure out how to make a die line, you can always come back to your Art 1200 Layouts for Packaging lecture and you can print these slides again, or you can print them now and save them for later. So, so to identify the steps that are necessary to create a die line, whoops, going the wrong direction, we need to make sure that one, you're always in a page layout program, so we're going to use InDesign. You could use Cork Express or any other page layout design, but you want to use industry standard software. Two, you're going to make sure that the die line is always on its own layer, so you should create a new layer in your program and label it die line, and then all the die line that you create should be on that layer and only that layer. Three, you're going to make sure that you use a spot color, so create a new swatch in your swatches panel, change it to be a spot color, and then change that spot color to be labeled die line. Now in the example that I'm going to show you on the next slide, um, I've used black, but in printing we generally use a peachy color for a die line, so you want to try to make it a peachy pink color, and that will work. It really does not matter what the color is as long as it's a die line um, and a spot color. Once you have created your spot color. Um, if you're not comfortable with the idea of a spot color, I've included a few links here and I've linked to a few videos on YouTube in your lecture material, so go ahead and look at those. It's not too um, important for you to have a solid understanding of the concept yet, but basically what happens is if we look at our swatches panel, I have all these colors and they're all going to be made of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Those are the printing process colors. So no matter what I what I create, I can, I can print it with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. I can have cyan and ye yellow to make orange um, and different things like that. If I use a spot color, it means I will literally use that color ink. So if I use a spot green, I'm literally going to print with spot green ink. Um, if I use spot purple, I use purple ink. Instead of using magenta and blue to make purple, I literally print with purple ink. Now we do that for a dye line because we can do something called outputting color separations, which would indicate how much ink it will take to print the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black plates to create those images. If we use a spot color, we'll have a fifth plate that is just all the color of the dye line. Once you're done with that, you're going to use whatever tool you'd like to make segments or lines. Those lines will be a pen tool, the line tool, you could use the pencil tool, you could use the shape tool, you can use anything you want as long as you can accurately recreate the shapes you're trying to create. When you create these lines, you're going to make sure that you use straight lines for a cut, dashed lines for a fold, and dotted lines for a perf. So in InDesign, on this slide here, you can see that I recreated that same pocket folder from earlier in the slideshow. All the outside lines are straight, and all the inside lines are dashed to indicate a fold. And this could be my die line, as long as I've made it with a spot die line color, and it's on a die line layer. When you are done, you're going to lock that layer so that you don't accidentally edit on it, and you're going to design uh, your pocket folder, your brochure, whatever it happens to be, on a different layer, in this case layer one, or you're going to rename that layer design layer. Okay, so how does this affect us in the math class? One, we have to be able to identify the die line, but two, we're going to use it to, to, um, to guesstimate or estimate pricing of a die. When you estimate pricing of a die, you need to figure out how many inches of metal it will take, and then you multiply it by a per inch metal price. So we're going to start off with perimeter. What is the perimeter of the square on your screen? Perimeter is the total distance around the outside of a 2D shape or object. So in order to calculate the perimeter of this shape, we must add up all the sides. And because it's a square, they're all 4 inches. 4, 4, 4, and 4 means the perimeter is 16 inches. 
When you're ready and you have the perimeter or you have the number of the amount of metal, the formula to calculate the price of the die is the total amount of metal required in inches multiplied by the price of the metal per every one inch. So if we're creating this pocket folder and we wanted to try to figure out how much it should cost to make this die, you first need to, to calculate the perimeter of the shape. In this case it would be 9 plus 9 going around the outside plus 12 plus 1 plus 3.5 plus 1 plus 9 plus 4 plus 9 plus 12. That's the perimeter. So the perimeter of this pocket folder is 69.5 inches. However, if I was going to price out the die for this, I need to also count these dashed lines or the interior lines. So I would add another 12, 9, and 3.5 and to get the total amount of metal needed to print this die. So let's practice perimeter again. What is the perimeter of the shape on your screen? Take a minute to add up all the outside edges. When calculating perimeter, I'm going to go clockwise in a circle around my shape. So I'll start with 28 across the top, 7 down the side, 28, 3, 13 inches, 1 inch, 13, and 3. When I add all of them together, I get 96 inches as the perimeter. But we can't forget about calculating all the interior lines that require metal for our die as well. So let's go back to our first example with the pocket folder. If we were to calculate the total amount of metal needed for this die, we would have the same formula for the perimeter, plus we'd add all the interior dashed lines which indicate folds. So let's go ahead and let's try to figure out the cost of this die, assuming that every one inch will cost us $1.50. So we'll add up the perimeter, which is 9 plus 9 plus 12 plus 1 plus 3.5 plus 1 plus 9 plus 4 plus 9 plus 12. So all these first numbers, they're from the perimeter. We've already done that. But now to get the total amount of metal, we must add all the interior lines, which is another 12, 9, and 3.5. And so the total amount of metal needed for this die is 94.5 inches. We could then figure out how much it will cost to make the die if a die cutter tells us that metal is priced at $1.50 an inch. So 94.5 times $1.50 per inch means the total cost for this die would be $141.75. I'd like you to try the next example on your own. Try to figure out the total amount of metal required to create this die, and then figure out how much it costs if the metal is priced at $1.25 per inch. The correct answer you should have come up with is 116 inches of metal at $1.25 per inch means this die will cost us $145. If you're comfortable with all the things that we've covered in today's lecture, you can move on to the homework and quiz for this week. Your homework and quiz one are questions like the math problems that we just did. Quiz two is an activity for you to create your own custom die line. Now I want you to create it, hand draw it, create it in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, whatever you're comfortable with, Microsoft Word. What I do not want you to do is to pull an image off of the internet and submit it. I will know that it came from the internet and you will receive a zero. Then above and beyond that, you have an extra credit assignment if you choose to do it. Once you create your die line, I'd like you to create the outline of where the, the metal will be required. If you fill it in with a design, then that will count as extra credit. You can submit that through Canvas. Both Quiz 2 and Extra Credit must be submitted as a PDF. If you need help with that, please contact me during office hours, online chat hours, or post something to the discussion board.